on this episode, bad news. And now, now we have to do math. <laughs> but Christian is determined. This is the explosions, man. They're important. And then success. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to another episode of our beautiful advanced schmuff tutorial. We are doing the explosions. Um, this is what we have. We had it last time around. It is not a great explosion. It, we are on our way to, to a great explosion, but it, we're not quite there yet. And we invested a lot of tokens and effort and, and brain power into getting here. So I know that if you see this, it might seem like, where, like, how? Is this, is this really what we're going for? No, it's not. There's like a crucial step, I think, to every explosion that we probably want to add today which is going to be uh, the color change right now our explosion is kind of like just one color so it would be nice to add the color change uh, and also the explosion explosion is a little bit regular we want to add some ir irregularities uh, there's also something that we want to add which is like um, sparks coming out all of these things are things that we want to add probably not something that we're going to add everything to in this episode so i'm, I'm judging there's going to be two more episodes about explosions but it's going to be worth it, I swear, it's going to be worth it. Let us think about colors. So we already did some setup in this regard. We already talked about when we were drawing the blob, we were already talking about how 154, um, we can use the color number to encode um, two colors at the same time. And we're kind of like taking advantage of this um, to be able to um, to kind of like show two colors, like shade our blobs with, with two colors. With a, there's main color and like a shade color, so to speak. So that's good. Uh, but now we want to change this. We want each uh, blob to have its own unique color. And then maybe that color should even change over time. Um, let me show you something. So check this out. This is a color reference I came up with. This is my color reference here. And these are the different colors that I would love to use for my explosion. And you know, these could change. This, you can have green explosion, you can have the completely different explosions for you if you want to make your own explosion. But for me, this is the color change I want to go through. So I want to have maybe like a just white on white uh, kind of color combination where the blobs are just pure white. This is for the initial flash. Um, then I want to maybe have like this combination where it's like uh, pure white, but then shaded with a with a yellow. So it's kind of like white, but you can see a little bit three D uh, coming up. Uh, this is the combination we already have one five five four, which is yellow, yellow and orange, which is like the main color of our explosion, main color of the fireball. Now this is the kind of like where the fire is cooling down. And for that, you know, the shading color, the shadow color is actually brighter than the main color. And the idea is that, you know, maybe the, the explosion is cooling down, but there's like more fire coming from beneath the explosion from like there's, it's cool gases that are covering up hotter gases inside the explosion. And so they are illuminated, so to speak, by the gases inside the explosion. So this is something that we would pick for a blob as it's cooling down. And then here we see a transition to the smoke. So first we see the gray of the smoke, but again, still illuminated perhaps by the explosion inside, uh, adding that red, that left flash of red. Uh, and here I think it's very important. And then here we just have the smoke color. So these are kind of like the color transition, color gradient that I want the particles to go through. But I want to have like, I don't want every particle, to, our particles to just start with this and end with this, right? I want to have like a um, control over the, uh, how the color change, but something to note is that I already wrote down the numbers that encode the different, the different um, color combinations here. So whenever I want to have like I know this, this uh, smoke color, I just want to turn that blob into the color ninety three, and that will encode the gray here, the gray of the the, the light gray, the bluish light gray of um, of the uh, of the blob and the dark gray uh, shading, right? That's all encoded in 93, okay? I'm gonna put this aside. It's gonna be at the bottom of my screen. And I'm gonna always 
take a look at it whenever I want to decide which color we're going to use, okay? Right, 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 right. So uh, let us first do a simple implementation of that. Let us just first make it so that individual explosions have, um, like each blob has a color, something like this. Um, so let's, for example, here say C equals, uh, and now it's 119. 119, uh, that is the white on white. Combination, it's just like the flash because this is, you know, the, this is supposed to be a flash. This is the initial two fr frames of flash happening, and for those we want to have just a pure white here. And here for the grapes, uh, let's just make it so that each grape has a different color. Let's see, maybe that's enough. Maybe we don't need that precise uh, com uh, control. So something like the final grape uh, would be color ninety-three. Uh, that's going to be the the smoke color. And then this grape maybe would have, I don't know, 169. And that's kind of like the uh, the cooling down fire, that fire that's illuminated from the inside. And then we have um, on the first grape, that's going to be 154. That is just a regular fire that we already had. Okay. And then uh, here in the grape function, which is, man, this function has just so many can we do this? We can do this like this, so we can like see all of the different, all of the different parameters in one in one. Uh, so let's call this e call something like e call, uh, e coli, which is and which is the color of the thing. It's just temporary. I, I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna spoil it to you. It just won't work. But um, we're gonna learn something from this. Okay, so we're dumping now of the. E call parameter. We're dumping that into the uh, the property C of our particle. So let's run this, and nothing changes. And nothing changes. Obviously, nothing changes because when we're drawing the blobs, we're not actually taking we're not actually taking into account that there's a color happening. So let's do that real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, here is good. Um, I think here we'll be drawing a circle fill, right? And that's where we want, instead of the 154, we want to go p dot c. We're going to take the color proper that we just set and we're going to use that to draw the circle. And uh, that's drawing the circles of the blob. Uh, but also we want to plug it in here where we, this is kind of like the, the, ex, the expensive tweak to make the little particles, the tiny particles look nice. Um, we want to plug in the PC in there as well. Okay, so let's try this now. Ooh, okay, okay. We see that the grapes are actually changing color and that you can already tell that this explosion actually got a lot more interesting now. But still, it's not quite what we're looking for. And by the way, something I wanted to, to look to see. Ah, see, now we going step by step, frame by frame. You can see now we get the beautiful flash. And now we first have the fire. Now we have the dark fire. And now we have the smoke. But again, it's just like, it's kind of, for example, it's weird that there's just like a smoke blossoming out of our explosion. It would be makes more sense if it started out as fire and transitioned into smoke. So this is not exactly what we're looking for. We want to have a more granule control over how our particles are changing colors. Okay, so okay, so let's me let me propose a system here. Let me propose a system where we're going to do a different approach. Maybe maybe let me let me see here. Uh, what are we doing in the grip? Instead of the e call, let us do something called ec tab. Uh, we're going to have a property called C tab. I'm going to keep the C around for now. Uh, let's just set it to zero, or whatever. We're going to have a property called C tab, which is called a color table. And the idea with this color table is we're going to have a table, like a, a, an array of numbers, and the particle over its lifetime will cycle through those. Um, with those colors. It will just, you know, maybe this we have three colors, right, uh, in the table, like three numbers in the table. Then it will start with a with a color and when it's at the third of its lifetime, it will switch to another color. And then at the uh, final third of its lifetime, it will switch to the third color. Okay? Something like this. Um, so we can control. So we can control uh, the colors. Um, 
something like this. Uh, I'm gonna start with zero. We're gonna we're gonna think about this in a second. Um, first, let us let us go into the into the particle code. Okay, so here is where the particle is, and we're checking if the particle at h is zero, which means the particle was just spawned. And um, here is where we uh, you know we're remembering where the particle has started. Um, so we could maybe here. No, actually, let's make it here with a pH. After we advance the H, we animate color. Uh, we're going to say something like if uh, C tab, then. So if there is a, t a color table happening, then we want to change the color. If there is no color table, because there might be particles without a color table, in this case, we just don't do, do nothing. We just can keep using the... Um, the C property that we already had here. We're just going to keep using this. Um, but if there is a table, then we want to maybe change the color. And the way we're going to do this is going to go p.c equals C tab square bracket. And now, now we have to do math. <laughs> I'm sorry, we have to do math. <laughs> um, we have to calculate how far along in the lifetime of the uh, particle we are. So let's do something like um, local life. I'm going to call it life, okay? Um, and then I'm going to say like um, p dot h um, divided p by p dot max h. Okay? So if the h is small, let me think about this. Yeah, so when the h is small, when we are young, so to speak, then life is gonna be close to zero. And when we, the moment we approach max h, we're gonna, that moment we're gonna turn into one. Um, that's kind of what we want. There's a slightly problem here that we, you know, the minimum h of our particle is one. So let's go uh, ph minus one here. Um, that should, and then I guess max h also should be minus one. Oh man, oh, you know what? Let's just keep it around. We can fine tune things around. I did, it's, it doesn't have to be exact science. That's the thing. Like this is just like some particles changing colors. If, and if they change one frame later or earlier, whatever, you know? Okay, so now we have to turn this number that is from zero to one. Uh, we want to turn that into um, one of the entries from the table. Um, so we do something like uh, uh, local i equals um, life times c tab hashtag c tab. Will that work? Um, no. Um, in I mean ph is never zero, but in cases where ph would be zero. Um, we would arrive at entry zero, and there is no entry zero, so that's already bad. Um, uh, but also, I feel like we only will have ever one frame, because it's flooring, we only have one frame in which uh, we're going to access the final entry in, the, in this table, so that's kind of like bad. Um, so let's go one plus, that's better. And... Then C tab minus two, I guess. That's what I'm thinking. Wait, wait, no, no, not not minus two. It should be minus one. Yeah, to to offset, to offset the one, right? Let's try that. Let's just see how that works. Um, and then we're gonna plug this I into here. Is what I'm thinking. Uh, we're going to clean this up in a second, but at first I'm going to see if this even works. Um, so let us here in this in this uh, let us turn this little this little flash into an experiment, right? Let us make it max h four, and then c tab c tab, and then let's not make any grapes. C tab equals, and then we're going to go. Uh, through a sequence of of um, widely different widely different um, colors, so we're going to see if this this works. So we should one, two, three, four. Yeah, we should we should see f four colors. We want to make sure that we're going to see our four colors. If we don't see four colors, if the particle doesn't change 
uh, through four colors, then we made some problem with the math. Let's see. Okay, white is good. I like it. White was the first color. It's not changing. And now it's disappeared. So, <laughs> a failure. Gosh, that was a failure. A complete failure. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see the problem. C tab uh, should be p.ctab. P.ctab. <laughs> Small problem. But it still stays white. Okay, I've, mm, I've, I've noticed. Mm. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, I've seen some color changes here, so I think we're, we're okay. So white is good, no change. This is good, this is good, but I don't see the final entry. We didn't see the final entry, so we should we should be seeing the final entry. We have not seen the final entry, that's not good. Um, so what about if we do something like this? Let's try that. This is good, this is good, this is good. This is also good. Okay, that minus one was wrong after all. Um, I'm still a bit nervous though. And I think we, I'm gonna do something like this. Mid one comma um, PC tab. Uh, just making sure that whatever comes out in this math, that whatever comes out in this math, uh, that this stuff will be um, will be within the range of the available uh, array. Like if it's outside of the range of the array, we're gonna get errors, and we don't want those errors. So let's let's make it like this, and then maybe just to make it a little bit easier to parse, because I'll be creating two variables here, and I don't think we need them. So there's just let's just keep using i here. So we're gonna go local i. And then i equals this and then this and then here instead of life you're going to use i okay just like keep using i reusing i for everything let's try this again yes 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 <laughs> yes okay so um the color has been animated there's some things i wanted to still fix uh when we reach our maximum age. I don't want the color change to happen because we're doing funky stuff with the maximum age, right? And I don't want the particles to go through another uh, color animation. So I want to set, set C tab to nil. And that means that all this color animation won't happen anymore. And that means that, um, you know what? Uh, let's just like, by default, we're going to C tab to nil. That doesn't matter what. Uh, uh, what uh, what type of on end action happens? We're always going to set C tab to nil. Um, so we're going to freeze the color animation when uh, the maximum age has been reached. Uh, and also we also could probably do an on end equals nil as well here. Right, right, good, good. So again, let's try to run this code. Just making sure. Yeah, still works. Okay, good, 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 good. Perfect. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I wonder if we can get rid of the C. Can we do that? Is that is that possible now? Yeah, no, no errors. Oh no, we can't, we cannot. Funny, why is that happening? I wonder. We must be drawing that particle at, at uh, uh, when it's age zero, when, um, yeah, yeah, probably what, that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going through this uh, this thing, and then when the p weight is nil, um, this do part is finished for that particle, and then we we finish the particle animation, and then we draw the particle, and that particle then starts out having no color, and that's not good. Um, we can do a, a test here if c equals nil and c tab then um, p and p uh, p dot c equals p dot c tab one just like this uh, just like a little test so that when the weight is over is that okay oh i might not actually work with this particle right oh it doesn't work with this particle though because this particle doesn't have a weight 
Okay, just let, let's just make sure that whenever we setting a C tab, we always also setting is a color, and that's will solve that problem. <laughs> um, so here we're gonna go with C equals 190. That will solve the problem, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, so let us start using the CDEP for something useful. Um, we're going to set the max h to, to back to 2. Um, actually, we could, we could uh, even use this to do interesting interesting color animations. Yeah, see? Now the flash is, uh, has a little bit more, has a slight, slight animation. We, the eye won't notice this, but, you know, just like little detail. Um, yeah, because if you run this, let, let's run this. Yeah, this is, you don't you don't see. It's just like a little flash, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but let us now add this all this to the grapes. And again, those grapes are getting pretty long here, so I want to maybe do like a return here. Um, here, so we see all the code. So f until now, this was the parameter to just like, like a solid color, but now we want to maybe replace this color with a color animation. Um, yeah, let's try to do this. Okay, so with um, with this is the fireball. Let's start it with 167. That is the brightest color fireball. That's with a little bit of a yellow shading, and then we're gonna transition to 154, and then maybe even already go back to 167. That's kind of like the um, the dark, the dark, uh, the already cooling gases and the next one i want to maybe yeah just one six seven yeah just like the same thing basically let's try that and then the final one i actually want to start with one five one five four one six nine then i'm gonna go to one four one and then nine three uh, probably these are the wrong colors but we're gonna see what happens Okay, that's good. Ooh, right, 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 right. We are not setting a default color. Let's just do that real quick. Um, something we can do here, C is gonna e, e, uh, EC tab one. We're just gonna pick the first color from the color table for the, for the starting color. Okay. Oh, that's weird. That's not something we wanted. Something weird happened there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The colors are turning white at the end. Is that what we... Oh, we said that. We, we said that once... It's not supposed to be 167. It's supposed to be 169. Yeah, yeah, Okay, good. Let's try that. Yes, this is good. Yes, this is good. Yes. Okay. Let's run this. Ooh, ooh, I like this explosion. This is nice. Why is it not fading out properly at the end? There is something weird happening at the end. We have a fade here, right? Oh, oh okay, 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 okay. Got it, got it. Uh, because we have this stuff. Okay, good. Um, yeah, let's just put it here. Because we deleted the on end statement before, before we did anything. Ah, oh, now it looks even better. Ah, oh. ooh, I like this. See, you can see that um, for an explosion, like this transition of the color is actually key. It's actually key to make the explosion feel hot and and, and fiery. You know, you want to the particles to cycle through different colors. I think this this adds a lot to this. This adds a lot. Uh, let me tweak things. I actually have some, like, I spent some time tweaking those things. And this is, you know, again, one of the things I cannot really show off here in front of the camera. Um, but here's um, values I, I've, I've used before. Uh, so previously I had um, the fireballs start with 119, the first grapes with 119, and then transition to the bright color and then stay bright a little bit. So we can repeat the colors to, for, to kind of like change the, the timing a little on the colors. And then go to one five four. So that's going to be the uh, the final. Let me check, we check this. Is that the first one? 
Yeah, that's, that's the first one. Then this one is basically this, this basic stays. And then this one, this last one, I had, uh, I didn't start at one, five, four. I started actually at uh, one, six, seven. So I started a bit brighter. Uh, I then went through all of this. I actually stayed brighter for long, interesting. Let's see how that works. Yeah, yeah. So you can see more of a flash at the um, by the end there. Oh yeah. Yeah, this, this looks nice, this looks nice. Now, something that's a little bit missing here, and you can tell that when I press a button, it's it, it, you don't hear anything. So let us bring in an explosion. Let us bring in an explosion sound. And this is the part where I'm going to totally, totally copy already an existing sound. I'm sorry that I'm doing so much, you know, paint the rest of the cloud, uh, uh, owl, owl kind of stuff, but we've been here before. You've seen me tinkering with the sound for no end. You don't want to be watching me trying to find out the sound. I'm just going to paste in a sound that I know works well. So this sound is going to be the pink sound, actually, funny enough. Uh, so, so it's noise, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be something like... Oh, Oh, wait, no, this pink sound. Um, it's gonna go something like this, and then this, and then like here, and then a little bit up, and then down, and then and then and then here like this. And the key to all of this is also gonna be like I'm making uh, doing a bit of chaos on the on the on on here. I'm gonna make it a bit slower. Yes, yes, maybe, maybe, maybe like this, and then here at the end. And then here on, on the settings here, we're gonna turn on noise, we're gonna detune it all the way. That sounds like a fiery sound. Something like this, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna do here, when we do the explosion, we're gonna go SFX uh, zero. Oops. Isn't that great? Already, already looking really, really, really nice. Cool. All right, so the next thing, thing I'm, I'm gonna do is gonna be maybe a bit controversial, but hear me out. Um, so far, uh, we were talking about the two different types of doing animations of particles, just radically two different approaches. One is like the two thing where you set some coordinates and the particle is supposed to go there, um, which we also apply to the radius. We're going to set a set radius and the particle will grow or shrink until it gets to that radius. And we said this was good for what we're trying to do where particles are supposed to uh, approach certain positions. But we also said that, you know, this other approach where the particles are just like um, have some speed and are just flying at certain speeds. This is good where the particles are not supposed to reach a certain position, but are just like, you know, flying on their own. We're going to modify our already extensive movement system, our particle system to support both types of movement. Both types of animation I want to support for, um, for the position and for the size. And there's a reason for this. Is we're going to use this particle system not just for the blobs, for the explosion, uh, but we're going to use it also for other particles. And there's certain effects that I think work a little better when they are controlled with a speed rather than with a, you know, a go-to position. And one of the things is that, for example, the fade out. I don't like the fade out of the of the particles. I feel it feels a little bit, with this kind of, uh, with this formula to be said, it's, it has like this easing in, which means it animates towards the target value fast at the beginning and then slows down as it, as it approaches the value, which is good generally for certain things. For example, an explosion, you go fast in the beginning and then slow down. But for other uh, types of animation, it's not good. For example, fading out is a bit problematic because when you, uh, like like shrinking down, right? Because it shrinks down at, uh, very quickly at the beginning and then, then stops. It, it would be nice if it shrank down slowly and then maybe faster or it would shrink down in a constant speed. Generally, I just want to have more tools with which I can control the movement, uh, the position and the, and the size of the particles. So let's just like add a different system. Um, we're going to add a p, uh, the p.sr. 
speed radius. And when this is set, we're gonna go p.r uh, plus equal p.sr. That's all there is. <laughs> it's, it's not a very complicated piece of code, right? Um, so for example, here, you can apply it immediately here when we do the uh, fade, for example. I did like a, a tor, like a 2r situation here where I just said like, okay, shrink down to zero and then and then let it run. But I, maybe it would be actually nicer if we're gonna set it to nil. And then we're gonna go p.sr uh, equals, let's say minus 0 0.1. So it's kind of like it, it shrinks at a constant speed. So let's see if how that works. Oops. See, it's it's slower now, but it's also kind of constant, and like, I feel it, it it looks better. We can make it a bit faster. See that 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 smoke just looks a little bit nicer now. Um, I have. Um, we can also add some variation. We can add some randomized um, randomization to this. And I have written down. So I've been experimenting with different values for this, and and this is a good one that I came up with. Mm, something like this, minus R and D, 0.3, something like this. So now the individual particles, when they're fading out, they're fading out at different speeds. And you can see this immediately looks better. We don't have like this kind of like, everything looks the same anymore on the fade out, but now the different, different blobs are fading out at radically different speeds. That's a lot better. And so now also we kind of get, can get rid of the speed change here. We don't need that anymore. Uh, here we can also apply this as well here. So when we are shrinking down again, uh, when we when the particles return um, on the on the on the first two grapes, we can also do sr equals. Let's go minus one. Let's see how that works. I, I want to um, I want to see one grape. I want to see observe one grape. Uh, so let's just quote these guys out. Yeah, um, it's, I think it might be a bit too fast even. I think we could even go a bit slower, 0 0.5. Yeah, that's better. Maybe even 0 0.2, let's see. Ah, uh, 0 0.3. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, so let's bring bring them back. Bring them back. Oh yeah, this is already looking. This is mighty, mighty nice, mighty nice. Um, and so I want to also add, also add another thing here. I already talked about it. Um, so when we do the speed, we have ever now a radius speed animation kind of thing. I also want to add the same thing for uh, for the position. So this thing I'm going to also use for the position. So we're going to have an S, X and S, Y. So again, uh, we are assuming that if S, X was set, then also S, Y was set. Um, that saves us an if statement. And we're going to just do the same thing. If P dot, uh, P dot X plus equals S, X, and then P dot Y, uh, plus equals sy, like this. Now, the reason why I'm adding this is I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, what I want to do is I want to the grapes to be like the particles slowly moving upwards. Right now we're just exploding three grapes uh, offset, like one grape, next grape, next grape, like we offset onto the top. That's good, it seems like the explosion is moving up, but I actually want to move the individual blobs upwards. I actually want them to drift upwards. Um, and in order for them to drift to upwards, I'm just going to give them a negative, a slight negative speed. So they're kind of like slowly moving up. That's good. Um, but that means that we're using like the 2x and the sx at the same time. And they will start fighting each other. When you start, you know, when the particle starts drifting up, but it has a set position, it will try to go back to the position that it's supposed to go. So uh, when we're moving the, the particle, we should also should move its target as well. We, we add kind of like this kind of thing. So we're going to go like if... Uh, p dot um, p dot talks then so within here we're gonna say like uh, p dot talks to x equal uh, plus equals sx 
and the same with SI. And I know we're adding a lot of complexity, a lot of stuff to those particles. Um, maybe it's not necessary, um, but I think it's worth investing a lot of tokens in here because again, this is might be something that we're going to use for different things as well. And also, like this is the explosions, man. They're important. <laughs> We can always put a star on this and then later on maybe simplify things when we feel like we really need those tokens back. Um, okay, so now let's add the drift. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to, in a grape function, I'm going to do yet, yet another parameter. And that is going to be e drift. E drift. Um, and then we're going to do, when we're creating the particles, we're going to go sx equals zero, sy equals e drift, like this. Uh, we're going to apply the same thing to this. And then here, when we are spawning the particles uh, with the grapes, uh, I'm going to add some drift. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is getting a little bit out of hand. I just want to make sure that we are... Okay, so what are some drift values? So let's, let's say that first one doesn't drift, but then the next one is going to drift by 0 0.1, and the next one is going to drift by 0 0.2. So more drift as we continue. Uh, we didn't close something. Yeah, that's, that's, that's possible. Entirely in the realm of possibilities. Okay, let's try this. See, there's a lot more fluidity. There's a lot more movement to all of this. This feels much more alive, much more, much more animated. Yes, this is what I like. This is what I like. Uh, actually, we won't, We might even add more to more drift to this. So let's go like 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. I want. I want this feel really nice and alive. Yeah. See. The re one of the important reasons why we're also adding the drift is something to keep in mind is that the screen will be scrolling all the time. So if you have an explosion that stays on the screen, it will actually look as if it's going downwards because you expect everything that's stationary to be going up at a certain speed. Um, so you definitely want everything to be moving upwards a little bit. And I really like how now the smoke is also drifting upwards. Yeah, this, this, looks, this looks solid. All right, let us now move on to the doggy zone. Mm -mm -mm, the doggy zone. And with the doggy zone, I wanted to remind you of, of, of a certain thing. I wanted to remind you of a thing. Remember when we did this? Remember when we um, did the analysis of the explosion from the Apache? This is kind of like our template that we're working with. Um, and I want you to look at this. I want you to look at these things. This is cool. These are kind of like what I call the sparks. And right now our explosion is all blobs. So it looks like this and maybe looks a little bit like this, but it never looks like this. It never has any jaggies. Um, so the doggy zone now for the next episode, and that's something that we're absolutely gonna do in the next episode, is gonna do, um, it's gonna be, we're gonna add the sparks. So how do we add the sparks? And extra bonus, we want to use the same particle system the same particle system that we're using now. So the same particle system that we're using for the blobs, I want to also use for the spark. So we don't have to write a new particle update function. I, the same particle function is going to be used for the blobs and the sparks. Hmm. Hmm. Can you do that? We're going to find out on the next episode. As a little bonus, if that's too much for you, uh, I, we still haven't done the variation. So if you haven't done that, try, try that yet. Um, add some variation to the grapes. I want the different blobs and the grapes to have different sizes. Maybe you have different distance from the center. So it feels more, uh, more dynamic. Yes, yes, yes. And this is also the end of the episode. And usually at the end of the episode, I say a big, big, big thank you to all of the coffee supporters who are supporting this show, who are making this show possible. This time around, we have a new supporter, Robert Fisher just joined on coffee. Welcome to the crew, Robert. And also, I also wanted to read some comments um, on episode three of the series. Kai Dubrin said, pro tip when scrolling on a blank or otherwise repetitive map, space 
spacebar is a far better shortcut than middle click as the spacebar also shows a grid. Absolutely true. I don't know why I'd use the middle click. I usually like to use the spacebar for that specific reason. So when you're on the map, you pr keep pressing the spacebar and then use the mouse to uh, like click with the mouse and drag with the mouse to move around. And while you're pressing a spacebar, there's like a grid showing you, you know, when a screen ends and new screen begins. Very, very useful. Thank you so much for the reminder, Kai. So if you guys out there want to support this show as well, the address is coffee.com slash laziness. One of the big perks is that you get to see new episodes earlier. So check it out, coffee.com slash laziness. Yes, okay, so we are almost there. The explosion already looks really good. I told you the colors add a lot, but also the drift added also a lot. We are getting there. Now what I want to do is I want to add the sparks and I want to deal with the, you know, mix things up a little bit, add more variation. It's gonna be a fun final episodes for the explosion. See you next time around.